I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about trigonometric integrals. Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about section 7.3 on trigonometric integrals and we are going to start with problem 13 which wants us to evaluate the integral of sine of x raised to the fifth power dx. Okay, so uh, the first thing is we see that we have sine raised to the fifth power. And the real key piece here is that the fifth power is an odd power. And if I have a sine of x raised to an odd power, then I know exactly what I need to do. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this and I'm going to break one of those signs off to the side. So I'm going to write this as a sine of x times sine of x to the fourth. So this is still sine of x raised to the fifth power. I've just written one of the sine x's out to the side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this again. I'm going to leave this sine of x sitting out here by itself. And now I'm going to change all of the sine of x to the fourths, all of those I'm going to convert to cosines. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to remember that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. So sine squared of x is the same thing as 1 minus cosine squared of x. So this is 1 minus cosine squared of x. Remember, this is sine squared of x. That's the same thing. I don't have sine squared of x here. I have sine to the fourth of x. So I'm going to square this guy, dx. Now, think about that for a second. 1 minus cosine squared of x, that's the same thing as sine squared of x. And then I square that, and I get sine to the fourth of x. So everything's fine here. Now, the reason that I wanted to do this little trick and put it in this form is now I can make a nice little u substitution. I'll let u be equal to cosine of x, which means that du is going to be negative sine of x dx. That's why I have this sine of x sitting out here by itself is it's going to help me to write in my du in the substitution. But I do need a negative sine of x, not a positive one. So I'll put a little negative in here, which means I also need a negative outside the integral. And now let's rewrite. So the negative is still outside of the integral. And now I have the integral of cosine of x becomes u. So I have 1 minus u squared quantity squared. I have 1 minus u squared quantity squared, and then the minus sine x dx all is du. Now let's square this out. When I do, I get negative integral of 1 squared is 1. Then I get 2 times the first times the second, which is minus 2 u squared. Then I get the second guy squared, which is plus u to the fourth. I, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, u to the fourth du. All right. Everything's good. Now I'm ready to take an antiderivative. I still have my negative. Antiderivative of 1 is u. Antiderivative of negative 2u squared is negative 2 thirds u cubed. Antiderivative of u to the fourth would be plus 1 fifth u to the fifth. And then I have a constant. All right, we're almost done. We've got an antiderivative, but it's in u, not in x's. So I need to remind myself what u is. u is cosine of x. So let's plug things back in. And I get, I'll just distribute this negative at the same time. I've got a negative times cosine of x, so minus cosine x. I've got a minus times a minus, which is plus 2 thirds cosine cubed of x. 
and then I've got a minus times a positive, which is a minus one fifth cosine to the fifth of x plus c. And this is my antiderivative.